Welcome back to On The Spot STEM, and today we're going to be tackling 2019 AMC 12B problem number 17, which reads, how many non-zero complex numbers Z have the property that zero Z and Z cubed when represented by points in the complex plane are the three distinct vertices of an equilateral triangle? Now, <clears throat> to begin this problem, we consider two cases. The first case is when I have this volume configuration, where I have Z cubed being 60 degrees counterclockwise to Z. The second case I'm going to have is when z is actually 60 degrees counterclockwise to z cubed. So the biggest thing to take away here is we have to look at everything in rotation from a counterclockwise point of view. And I'll go through a formula in a bit, which will explain to you why. So I see that in the first case, what I have is z cubed is 60 degrees away from z when rotated counterclockwise. In the second case, z cubed is 300 degrees counterclockwise rotation from z because it's 60 degrees clockwise, which means by counterclockwise rotation, it will take 300 degrees. Now let's get into the first case. For the first case, I set up the following equation where I say z is equal to 660 times uh, z times 660 equals z cubed. So basically what this is saying is when I take the point z, I'm going to multiply it by 60, which gives me z cubed. So basically what 60 is, it's equal to cosine 60 plus i times sine of 60. And this is the rotation for a complex plane because as you know the complex plane, the x-axis is the real numbers and the y-axis contains the imaginary numbers with the terms like i. So the reason this, uh, so basically I proceed with this formula and I'm going to do the same thing in the second case. So in this first case, I'm taking the point z, rotating by 60 degrees counterclockwise to get to z cubed. So I have this following equation. I can then say that what I have is I have z cubed. Uh, I divide both sides by z to get z squared equals 60, which allows me to say that z is actually equal to plus or minus 30. Now, you might be wondering how I got this 30 number. Basically, de Moivre's theorem states that when you take a num complex number and you raise it to an exponent, the inside angle theta will also be scaled by the exponent you take it to. So in this case, I'm doing the opposite. I'm trying to make it from 2 to 1 half. So I scale the theta angle, which is 60 in this case, by 1 half to 30 degrees. And if this is a little confusing, you can visualize it this way. You can say that 60 is equal to e times i to the power of pi, e to the power of i pi over 6. This is basically uh, e pi over 3. And this is basically the definition of the cis, which is cosine plus i sine. And so basically what I see is that by taking a square root, I'm pretty much just dividing the pi over 3 by 2 to make it pi over 6, because in a square root, that's pretty much how it works. Now, let's move on to the second case. For the second case, I have the following equation. I have z times cis 300 equals z cubed. Now here's why I said it mattered which, which perspective we look from. Because the z times the rotation angle formula only works if I'm rotating counterclockwise about the origin. So in this case, to get to z cubed, I'm rotating by 300 degrees counterclockwise and not 60. So here I prefer, proceed in the same way. I divide both sides by z to get z squared equals, uh, to get, which equals 300 degrees. So this is 300. And then so I can just simplify this to z equals plus or minus cis 150. And again, the reason this works is because of de Moivre's theorem, which pretty much states, uh, de Moivre's theorem which pretty much tells me that uh, if I'm going to scale it down to two, uh, from two to one, then I'm going to end up dividing it by one half. And so in this case, I see that I have four solutions. The four solutions I have are z equals plus or minus cis 150, and then I also end up having z equals plus or minus cis of 30 from the first case. So considering these four solutions, and I can tell they're all distinct, I see that the answer to this problem is indeed D, which is 4.